Greetings. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank my uh, dear colleagues for this uh, kind invitation. I wish I was there in person. And uh, these are my uh, disclosures. And I would like to share my thoughts on the role of snare in colon cancer prevention. So let us uh, look at the history of the snare. Uh, we need to go back to Japan uh, and see what Mr. Hiroshi Ichikawa, an engineer from Olympus, and Dr. Hiromi Shinya, uh, a surgeon uh, who immigrated to the United States. And they both met for the first time in late 1960s in New York, and they developed the snare. Uh, incidentally, they used the angulation wire of the endoscope uh, to build their first uh, snare, and that uh, snare uh, design has stood the test of time for over 40 years, and uh, as long as endoscopy uh, is practiced, a snare will play a prominent role. <clears throat> In the early 70s, Dr. Shinya and Dr. Wolf published their initial experience with uh, snare polypectomy in a landmark paper in the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, I would encourage all the uh, junior colleagues to read this paper and you will appreciate what Dr. Shinya has thought about uh, in the 70s, uh, the concept that if you remove a polyp, you could prevent cancer. Uh, subsequently, the National uh, Polyp Study, uh, led by uh, Sid uh, Venever from New York, uh, they have demonstrated that snare polypectomy uh, reduces colorectal cancer incidence, as well as mortality from colorectal cancer. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, what has happened in endoscopy, and if you look into the future, one thing is for sure, uh, that is certain. There is no other device that has had that much of impact so far and will continue to have a great impact into the future. That is snare, a simple device that can be used to prevent cancer. So let me take you through the concept of uh, using a snare in resection. And uh, for the sake of my junior colleagues, I would like to take you back to the anatomy of the pollen wall. As you can see here, there are uh, five layers of the pollen wall and the mucosa consists of epithelium, lamina propria and muscularis mucosa as the Neoplastic process starts in the epithelium and then goes down into the lamina propria and muscularis mucosa. And once it penetrates the muscularis mucosa and enters the submucosa, it becomes invasive cancer. And then you know that it goes down through the wall of the colon and it spreads. It is important to appreciate that a uh, neoplastic process limited to the mucosal compartment without extension into the submucosa has an out excellent outcome with endoscopic resection because there is no, uh, no question of lymph node metastasis as long as the process is limited to the mucosal compartment. Once it goes into the submucosa, as it goes deeper and deeper, you can see there is a higher risk of lymph node involvement. This concept is very important for you to keep in mind because resection of the mucosal compartment neoplastic process is curative. And this can be accomplished with endoscopic snare resection. Once it goes through the muscularis propria and enters into the submucosa, uh, there is a risk of lymph node involvement. Unless you can resect that 
uh, superficial submucosal component, along with the mucosal component and block with a snail, you are not going to achieve a curative resection in that small subgroup of uh, patients. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, once the process goes into the submucosa, you should consider surgery. If it is mucosal, you can go ahead with the uh, uh, snail resection. For those small percentage of patients with early submucosal involvement, uh, if you have the technique of endoscopic submucosal resection with the use of a knife, you can still achieve uh, curative resection as long as you do end block resection. So this is an important concept to keep in mind. Snail, polyps come in different uh, uh, sizes and shapes. And now on the left, you can see a pedunculated polyp. And as it goes down, uh, you can see sessile, flat, and depressed lesions. Snare can easily remove pedunculated polyps, sessile polyps, flat lesions. But when it comes to depressed lesions, it has a very limited role or no role. I would like to share with you how to resect three types of polyps that you will see in your practice and share with you some practical tips that will be useful. Let us start with a small polyp resection, less than 10 millimeters in size. You should use a cold snare, not a cold biopsy, because there is a higher risk of leaving tissue behind if you use a cold biopsy polypectomy. With a cold snare, you need to bring the polyp down to six o'clock and then use these following principles for a safe and complete resection. You need to have the snare visible. The snare tip, the plastic tip should be anchored to the wall and the snare should be parallel to the wall and include a rim of tissue as you close the snare for resection. That way you will achieve end block resection. So let us see in this video how a snare is used. You need to use a dedicated snare with a wire, a diameter of 0.3 millimeters, not the one that you use for hot snare, which has 0.47 millimeters in diameter. Use a little bit of normal uh, margin and then close. This uh, has low risk of bleeding and it can be used safely in patients on uh, anticoagulants as well. Let us talk about hot snare resection uh, using endoscopic mucosal resection uh, as a technique. I want you to keep in mind that as you can see here, your electrical cautery unit is right in front of you. That is very important to keep uh, in mind as you do uh, electrical cautery assisted resection. You do not want to have the machine in the back where you don't know what the parameters were set by your assistant. The parameters should be visible to you in front of your eyes. Uh, you use a, an injection needle. I typically use saline with a little bit of indigo carmine. Flush my needle so that I empty off any air. I ask my assistant to flush so that I know that there is uh, the syringe, uh, the, the needle has been primed. And then use this uh, control technique of injection of creating a submucosal bleb. And uh, once you create a bleb, you want to use what is called a dynamic injection technique to get a good lift for resection. What does this involve? Uh, there are three important steps. Uh, you have your injection catheter in your right hand, and you should hold your catheter one to two finger breaths above the biopsy port. And all you do is a gentle push that will get you into the submucosa. And you ask your assistant to uh, tap tap on the plunger of the syringe that will squirt a little amount of fluid and that will allow you to see the polyp to lift uh, with that small squirt. And uh, if in case uh, that needle is deep inside, uh, outside the wall of the colon, you would not see the lift. That's why the tap tap would allow you to find that space. And once the lift is there, you actually look up by 
uh, moving your uh, big wheel away from you and then slowly pulling the catheter back so that you get a nice big submucosal lift. And uh, I want you to practice this so that uh, if you practice this technique, you can resect any polyp very safely. So once you have a nice uh, submucosal lift with a dynamic submucosal injection technique, you use a stiff snare for resection. And when it comes to resection, I typically use my Irby machine, uh, endocut Q, and use my yellow pedal to cut. And the settings are endocut Q, effect three, duration one, interval three. What is effect three? As you can see here, uh, effect means coagulation. Uh, effect one, there's no coagulation. Effect three, four has a lot of coagulation. Uh, so I try to use effect three in between. And then I keep my duration short. As you can see, duration one gives a short cut, while duration four gives a longer cut. A shorter cut gives you more control of your resection. Then uh, the interval, typically I keep my interval about three fourths of a second, 720 milliseconds. And that's what I've used for all my resections and it is pretty safe for your resections. So when you use your snare for resection, you want to use a stiff snare, keep it parallel to the wall, and once you cut, uh, anchor underneath the prior cut so that you don't leave any islands of tissue as you complete your cut. And you should have a clean base, similar to what the ESD experts achieve. And this will reduce the recurrence with a snare EMR. What else can a snare do in addition to resection? A snare can be used for ablation and snare can be used for hemostasis. Uh, recently, uh, Michael Burke's group have shown that if you use a snare tip soft coagulation current and ablate the edge, that is showing no polyp at all, just no normal looking edge. Uh, he has shown that it reduces the risk of recurrence after a large EMR. Uh, that's what I also do in my practice. And then if you have a bleeding, uh, you could use soft coagulation uh, with effect 480 uh, watts and control the bleeding. Nowadays, when I do my EMR, on the left side of my electrosurgery unit, I have the endocut. On the right side, instead of using post-coagulation setup, I keep my soft coagulation setup so that all I have to do is if there is a bleeding, I keep my snare out there with the tip and press on the blue pedal and I have my soft coagulation. So when it comes to a large pedunculated polyp, uh, which has lots of blood vessels, a uh, high risk for bleeding, I use force coagulation for my uh, cutting of the stock. When it comes to large pedunculated polyp, which has a high risk for bleeding and also high risk for cancer in the head of the polyp, it's important to leave enough stock so that when you cut, uh, you have margin uh, from a, a cancer that is uh, occult in the head of the polyp. If you have one millimeter margin from the cancer head, you have achieved and block resection uh, and a curative resection as long as that cancer is moderately differentiated and there's no lymphovascular invasion and your margin is one millimeter or more. Our goal at the end of the day, when you use uh, any device for polyp resection is to have a complete resection so that there's no recurrence and to achieve a safe resection so that the patient can go home without the need for hospitalization or surgery. And you could achieve this in your practice with snare resection if you practice these principles. If you ask me why I use, uh, I wanted to give this talk, uh, snare has been shown to be effective uh, for preventing colorectal cancer. It is simple to use and it is very cheap. Uh, it is about $15 in the US compared to a knife, which is uh, much costlier. And a snare 
can take care of 90 to 95 percent of the polyps that one would see in their practice. And uh, you could do a lot of good uh, for your patients without uh, incurring a lot of cost. I'd like to bring uh, best wishes to you all uh, from the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. And I'm grateful to all my friends for working very hard during this difficult time and also uh, taking pride in providing high quality education. Thank you.